This is the story about the time I shot with an Alexa Mini, and it was the absolute worst camera I could have used for that project. You see, a few years ago, I was asked to direct a music video for a band, and when they told me the budget, I immediately started thinking, what kind of camera can I rent? with this budget. Now for some important context, I was hired as a co-director with the band, but that also meant that I was gonna be taking care of the producing role, cinematography, and wearing a bunch of different hats. So I would be in charge of managing the budget. So real quick, I wanna run you through the financials of the project, but for this, we're gonna use Monopoly money because I think that's just kind of fun. And it doesn't really matter the amount of money that the, was in the budget, but actually how I used it. That is the kind of learning point for this video. So with a $500 million budget, I thought, well, this is the biggest budget I've ever gotten. I wanna shoot on the best camera out there, which at the time for me was the Arri Alexa Mini. So after running the numbers, I was gonna to have to pay around 250 million to get the Arri Alexa Mini for a week. But if you're doing the math, then you realize that we've already used half of our budget and we've only rented a camera. And technically I would need to rent a car that fit the vibe. I would probably need a couple locations, at least one that was gonna be really easy where I wouldn't have to set design anything, just a killer location that matched the vibe as well. And on top of that, obviously, I'm gonna need a little bit more kit and a crew to actually help me shoot the whole thing, right? But sadly, when your camera rental takes up half your budget, you really don't have that much room to actually flex when it comes to all the other important things. And I found that out pretty quickly. So I used the remaining 250 million to rent a couple more pieces of gear, like some lights and hire some crew for the project totally neglecting everything that was actually gonna go in front of the camera. Now at a glance, you might think, well, you're about to shoot a music video with a bunch of your friends and you're shooting on an Arri Alexa Mini. So how could that possibly go wrong? It sounds like a dream, but that's not exactly how it went. You see, once we started shooting, we immediately started running into problems. Not with the camera, no. The camera, the pictures that the camera was capturing was perfect, chef's kiss. But what was in front of the camera was not chef's kiss. And ultimately, the way this story goes is not the way you would want it to go when you're shooting your first semi-big budget music video. The concept itself actually wasn't as developed as it should have been. So in all of my pre-production and getting all the gear situated because I was so focused on the camera itself, I didn't put the time in to really flesh out the concept. And because I didn't do that, what we ran into was this concept wasn't really vibing with the actual feel of the band. After a full weekend of shooting, the entire video was scrapped because it just wasn't hitting. And we were left with 48 hours hours until the deadline to actually deliver the music video. My crew was unavailable, the Airy Alexa Mini had been returned to the rental house, and this is the point where I just gave up and I never made another music video again. Okay, that's not exactly true, but I will say that this was a really tough moment for me, and I wasn't sure if I was ever going to be able to <laughs> make another music video again. With 48 hours, me and the band got together, we came up with an idea, we shot, edited, color graded, and delivered that idea within those 48 hours. We shot it on a Pocket 4K, put up on like a C stand, cause I didn't have a tripod with me, like it was a mess. And to this day, it's their best performing music video on their entire YouTube channel. But I don't tell you that to flex or to say, that I did a great job. In fact, I wish that this project had gone totally differently because at the end of the day, I could have created such a better music video for these guys, but I was too focused on just getting to shoot with that cool camera. Just for fun, let's rebudget that money and look through a different story and see how things could have gone had I not rented the Alexa Mini. So out of our 500 million, we're gonna use 100 million on our location, another 100 million on a producer, this is a little out of order, but you get the idea. We're gonna use another 50 million on a car. And then because I have some lights of my own, I really could have afforded to pay for a production designer and get some of my friends to help me out and crew it as well. And because I have all these other players that are on my team and being paid to be on my team, I can focus on the cinematography and the directing of it and really flesh out that concept and actually get it to a point where it fits the band. Now, my point in all of this is hopefully to show you the mistake that I made, to give you an opportunity to learn from my mistakes. And when you get an opportunity to work with some actual money that could allow you to rent an amazing camera, that camera you've been dreaming about shooting with, I would just encourage you to take a deep breath, think about it first, and try to remember that at the end of the day, the camera isn't really what's gonna make the project unique and stand out and all that. At the end of the day, what goes in front of the camera, the things like set design, production design, the locations that you rent, the vehicles and costumes that you rent, and the people that you bring with you on set are what is gonna make the project 
go well. I've heard it said before that a lot of cinematography is actually what you put in front of the lens, not what's behind it. So I think every filmmaker makes mistakes and those mistakes are the point where we get the opportunity to decide are we going to make another mistake similar to that or are we going to learn from that mistake and hopefully continue to make better videos and films. I hope that you found this video helpful and honestly I would love it if you would subscribe because all I'm trying to do with this YouTube channel is help you make better films. That's the, that's my sole goal. So hopefully this spoke to you and until next time let's get out there and make better films.